Welcome back to the Freedom Family. I'm Casey Peterson. And I'm Michael Peterson. And this is going to be a new running series of weekly family nights. This is something that we've done in our family for quite a while now, and we're going to be transitioning this over to a video format that we're going to watch with our kids in hopes that maybe you can use this as a resource in your family to either recreate what we do or even use it for family nights yourself. And this week's topic is going to be about courage. Yeah, we're going to learn about one of the most impressive individuals in American history who his sheer courage helped create our country. And this, what what is these family nights that we're that we've been doing? It's typically this is how it takes the form in our family. I just want to give a brief explanation here for this first video, that we do try to do these weekly. And if we don't remember, we actually have a system set up in our family where our kids can remind us and get some money. And then if we keep forgetting, that money goes up a little bit to help and incentivize everybody to remember to do these family nights. Mm -hmm. And they're specifically about morals or principles, not just teach them something, but to teach them something very specific. And uh, we go through our family values and connect them to history and different videos and resources. And uh, even if we don't do a full lesson, we will still take five, 10 minutes, even if we didn't prep something, to sit down and talk to them, because that's the more, most important thing. You have a lesson. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be rough around the edges. You ask questions. You get those deep conversations going with your kids. And then always we start at the beginning of the night. That's extremely important because you want to have a fun activity um, afterwards and treats. And then a lot of times we'll end everything on with like a family movie night. We don't watch a lot of TV, so that's a great treat for the family and the kids to sit down and watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this could be a template for your family or a resource for your family nights in the future and something you might want to do. And at this point in the lesson, we would typically recap the three main points from last week's lesson. We always try to do three main points at the beginning and the end of lessons because you'll cover a lot of ground. It can get confusing and you, you want to remember what the lesson was about to begin with. So always try to pull three main points out of it. But we'll spare you that this week of our three main points from last week and we will go straight into the lesson. Right, so this week is on courage. So the first thing you wanna do is simply ask your kids, what is courage? And start with your youngest and work your way to your oldest child and just let them define it as they understand it right now. And then you wanna give them the simple definition of courage and that is the ability to do something that scares you. Or in the words of John Wayne, courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. And the individual we want to highlight, if you didn't already guess, the individual we want to highlight is George Washington. George Washington, he both built this republic and saved it many times over. When you dig into George Washington's history, he's one of the most impressive individuals in history, despite his shortcomings and despite uh, anything else that he did. He is one of the greatest founding fathers of any nation. And... Even before he took on the task of being the general for our armies for the Revolutionary War, he was in the British Army. And he, am, he was in the British Army during the French-Indian War. And there's a story where they were ambushed. And he was shot through his coat four times and had two horses shot out from under him in that conflict. But never lost his cool or demeanor. Their general was mortally wounded and he took command of their troops and saved the remaining men. And there was another time in the British army that they went to actually save another force that was that was pinned down. And so they went through the woods and if you've ever been in war, you would understand the fog of war and how confusing it can get and how friendly fire happens and troops get shooting at each other. But they're approaching and the gunshots stop. They're approaching these gunshots in this conflict. And so they keep pushing forward and all of a sudden, gunfire breaks out, and he very quickly realizes that they're firing at British troops, they're firing at each other. And so he yelled and yelled, trying to yell them down and say, stop, you know, and no one was listening, fog of war, and everyone's panicking. And so he took his horse and his sword and ran down the front line of men where they're shooting and the other men are shooting back and started hitting their muskets up into the air to get their attention and yelling and was able to get the, get everybody stopped and saved countless lives that day from his bravery. And just think about, well, he could have easily hunkered down, kept yelling and saved his own life, but he cared so much about his men and had so much bravery that he actually put his own life at risk to save them. And one of the things that's probably the battle and the bravery story that sticks out the most to me is at the Battle of Princeton, New Jersey. And this is um, 
right after Washington and his army crossed the Delaware. And Washington took Trenton. And even the, even the story, if you get a chance to look into him crossing the Delaware and the sacrifices that the troops made that winter just to be able to cross the Delaware and take on the troops, take on this offensive is amazing. But Washington took Trenton and there was another force that went up and took Princeton. And then he heard that Cornwallis, the British general, was bringing a large force down through Princeton to drive them out. And this was they've only been there for one day. And so he says, well, I, we have to secure this victory. It's the beginning of the year. This is actually a turning point in the war, a major turning point. And when Washington arrived in Princeton, the American troops that were there were being driven back in retreat. And Washington walked his horse through the retreating American troops, not even looking left or right. And Cornwallis' records that Washington could not have even known if anyone even followed him. So they're watching him, like right, the generals, and this is a lot of the account from the other side. This isn't even Washington or his troops making this account. But Cornwallis records that he couldn't have even known if anyone was following him because he's walking, not looking left or right. And then as Washington got close, the he gave the order for the British to fire. And Washington was immediately shrouded in smoke, and he pulled down his cap because he couldn't facing this other general that he had respect for mm -hmm. falling in battle. And when the smoke cleared, he lifted his cap, and Washington was still marching directly, resolutely towards the British forces. And American forces have formed up behind him. And his action shook the British leaders and bolstered his troops so much that it led to the retreat of the British troops. And that, to me, is like the one of the best examples of how contagious courage can be. Mm -hmm. And even on his deathbed, even on Washington's deathbed in Mount Vernon, one of his attendants seemed particularly anxious. And he looked directly into this man's eyes that seemed so anxious and worried. And he gathered his strength and then he spoke. And he said to him, he said, don't be afraid. Like this, this man was a pillar of courage and so many other values and such an impressive figure in history. Probably the, uh, one of the best founding fathers and the most impressive founding fathers of any nation. There, that is such an amazing culmination of stories of courage. And I'm sure that's not even all of them. There's so many of the founding fathers and Washington in particular. So now you want to ask your kiddos if they or someone they know, someone close to you, has displayed courage. Maybe not courage like that, but any any type of courage. So you want to introduce the three main points. So you want to ask them again or give them the simple definition again of courage. And that's the ability to do something that scares you. And then number two, the most important thing, is that fear must be present to display courage. And number three is how will you individually work on courage this week. And so when we ask these questions, make sure you pause the video and like go around the room and try to get that conversation going with your mm -hmm. own family. But you say, have you or someone you know displayed courage? And that's a good way to kick things off. But those three main points, we're going to revisit them at the end. And that's what you want to have. Um, so number one, the ability to do something that scares you. Number two, fear must be present to display courage. And then have the kids and you thinking about those questions of what we're going to do this week. Right. So I just want to reiterate that since this is our first lesson. And you can go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So again, courage is the ability to do something that scares you. Fear is the feeling and courage. Fear is a feeling and courage is an action. So that fear must be present in order for you to decide to act. And the opposite of courage is cowardice which is not acting because of your fear. So a lot of people want to say, and that's kind of the opposite. It's not a direct opposite, but a lot of people want to say the opposite to courage is fear, but that's not true because obviously you have to feel fear in order to display courage. So cowardice would be the closest thing to an opposite of fear. But there's actually kind of three sides to fear when you really break it down. Um, but when you have a truly moral decision involved, right? Courage and cowardice are the only two choices. So... We'll come back to that here in a second, but what makes a courageous act, right? If you actually break that down, number one, you have to have the right disp disposition towards fear and confidence, and you have to do it for the sake of the beautiful or the moral, right? The right thing. So courage is in that middle space right between cowardice and rashness or stupidity. 
And in order to identify the middle ground of saying like, this is courage, you have to identify those extremes in, in every scenario. Saying like, what would be the rash response here? And what would be my cowardice response? And this can be kind of this point driven home. If you imagine that there's a bear outside and you need to take the trash out. And so there's this angry bear outside. Would it be cowardice to say, well, I'm scared. I'm not going to go outside. There's a bear outside. I think it, you'd probably be more rash. You're not courageous going out there. That's more rash or stupid to go out there. But now you change the scenario and you put a child outside and there's this angry bear out there. And that's your child. So obviously the courageous and correct thing to do is for you to go out there and confront that bear, scare it off, do whatever you have to to save your child. Yeah. So there's a type of courage for every type of fear. And courage is what you must do after you feel fear. And you remember when George Washington, that battle of Princeton, that courage is contagious. You just look at his men watching him walk completely un, unfazed towards the British troops, knowing what his duty was. And those men form, he didn't even know if they would form up behind him, but he kept walking anyways. And they saw that sort of, that sort of determination and that courage, and they formed up behind him and backed him up. I feel like that's, that's so inspiring. And it's definitely, uh, there's that quote from Billy Graham. He says, courage is contagious. When a brave man takes a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened. And this is, this is something, probably the most important takeaway from courage, because we have an epidemic of cowardice on our side of individuals that are unwilling to stand up unapologetically for their values and stand up for what's right and what's true and are constantly apologizing for the truth or avoiding so certain truths that might be inconvenient or offensive. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's very important. And this, we just want to go through a series of questions here in this part of the video. And this is something you can pause. You can take some of these questions. This just gives you an idea of how to get this conversation going. And some of the most important questions are the questions that you ask yourself or each other as the parents, as the guardian of these children, because they need to see your struggles more than they need to see your successes. And they love hearing your stories because you've already been through a lot of this. So make sure you're asking the hardest questions to yourself. Mm -hmm. And we'll kind of go in succession of these questions, talking about what the easiest, most simple questions are you might ask your younger kids. And then this moves up through adolescence all the way to the adolescents and adults type questions. So you could ask your littlest kids, like, when do you remember feeling afraid? And then what did you do? And did you do the right thing in that situation? So just very simple. What did you, when do you remember feeling afraid? And did you do the right thing? And then uh, as your kids are a little bit older, you can ask them a little tougher questions. Like, can you think of a person that did or said something where you wish you would have stood up? You would have, you would have uh, acted. And if, you know, I have them play that scenario out in their head. And then what should you have done instead? And, and then, this is this is a great one, I think, is um, asking the kids, like, how might you need courage in the near future? Like, kids are getting mm -hmm. ready to go back to school, so this yes. is a great thing. Like, run through some scenarios where you might actually have to use this in the near future, you know, and help them kind of role play those things. Because a lot of times this is... Like in the military, that's all you can do is role play until you're actually confronted with the fear. And the more you role play and train in your head, the more prepared you are to stand up and do what's right when that when that moment actually confronts you. So kind of get that role playing going in kids' heads, talking about like, oh, when they might have to be honest, when they might have to stand up for a friend or somebody that's not even their friend in the face of people that are bullying them, things like that. Mm -hmm. You got to get those their imagination going. And again, use examples from your childhood, from your life. And when you acted maybe with cowardice or with courage, either one, and then share those with your kids so that they can they can see that you're not perfect and that you have things to overcome. Yeah, I would say probably uh, telling your kids about a moment of cowardice, something you deeply regret, time you didn't stand up how you should have, is might even stick with them more powerfully than when you stood up with courage at some point. So I think that's important. Yeah, a lot, well, and a lot of times when you act courageously, you know, you're doing so at your own risk, at your own, at your own detriment. You, you might risk a a relationship potentially you know if you're if you're standing up for the truth and for what's right and that is a scary thing yep and that uh, brings us to a good quote from winston churchill oh so this is yes that's yep. ronald reagan this is winston okay so you have enemies good that means you've stood up for something sometime in your life so you so. stood up for something sometime in your life this is uh, might be a rough first go at our at our 
family night, but I, yeah. I think this quote from Winston Churchill is a good point to end on because this is what a lot of people fear most is having somebody that might not like them or somebody that might look at them as an enemy. So I think this is a very powerful quote. We got one more from Ronald Reagan. But before that, I would like to recap these three main points again mm -hmm. to remember. And this is what we're going to be quizzing on next week to make sure that we remember the most important takeaways. Number one, courage is the ability to do something that scares you. Number two, fear must be present to display courage. You have to have fear to display courage. And number three, make sure that you get a commitment from every single person in the room of how you will personally work on courage this week. And Ronald Reagan said, the future doesn't belong to the lighthearted. It belongs to the brave. So remember, get out there and spread truth.